Thank you so much for joining me, for clicking on this video. I appreciate your time. I am going to address today how climate changed my orchids, their growing habits, especially throughout the growing season. So we could consider this a recap, but I want to start with one example from still winter, January being one of the coldest Januaries we have ever had here. I normally go down to five degrees Celsius outdoors. This year we went down to four. Now you may say, well, whoop de do one degree doesn't really matter or make any difference. And that's true. It didn't for my outdoor growing orchids. Absolutely didn't affect them one bit. But my indoor growing orchids had to tolerate two degree differential. Normal, I have 16 degrees in my dining room and it dropped to 14 degrees. And I don't supplement with a heater or heat mats. Not that I don't believe in them, but from a cost point of view, even in past years when I've had all those additional supplementations of heat, because of the way the house is built, there's always a draft. So it wouldn't really make that big a difference except around the root balls. And I used to lose orchids anyway. So I just thought, well, that's a pointless exercise and I've stopped all that. Anyway, 14 degrees is a big difference. As you can see here on the leaf of my Sologeny pandorata. My Sologeny lives indoors during the winter months. Obviously, it's a warm to hot grower and will not tolerate my outdoor temperatures, but it never did this damage while it was indoors in previous years. And this is cold damage. So what is it doing now? Just as a point of interest as well, I've pulled some examples of orchids from my collection to show you where I've noticed how my climate changed this season, including the growing season, all throughout. It was quite steady. That I've noticed, for example, my Sologeny pandorata by now, last year, was starting to mature the bulb and it had already bloomed. And this year, in 2021, the growth only started in early July. Whereas last year, by July, it had already bloomed and come this time of year, it was maturing its bulb. And you can see how the growth is still very skinny and I'm not getting any blooms. So for me, that is also something that goes back to how mild my spring was. As in mild, there was such a slow increase of temperature after a very cold January, February, March. I did bring my orchids out in April, but when it came to April, May and June, I was like, where's the heat? And I know my heat factors as of when do I start wearing flip-flops. And I know this year, I only consistently was able to wear flip-flops in June. So this whole growing season has actually delayed everything that my orchids have done for about four to six weeks. And that is why my Pandorata is only doing what she is doing now and we won't have any blooms. And I have a note that somebody wants a dried bloom from the Pandorata. I have not forgotten you, but she's not blooming this year. So don't worry, I'll hold on to that note and it is going to hopefully happen next year. There's something else though. There are certain symptoms of climate change throughout the collection, but especially with my hot growers, the Cattleyas. Let me show you something. This is my Zagarique Wax African Beauty. She bloomed. It was amazing, beautiful, totally unexpected, very happy. But she was in my blooming alley at a time where the angle of the sun is already lowering in the sky. So the sun penetrated through onto the blooming alley shelf that she was living on while she was in bloom. And look, I wasn't paying attention because I'm used to her blooming much earlier in the season, even like four weeks before whatever happened this year. And the angle of the sun is so high in the sky, my blooming alley is in full shade. Not this year, hence sunburn. You know, the, the, this whole climate change thing, I'm not harping on about it. I'm not saying it's happening or it's not happening. I'm referring to what I saw happening from my grow season of 2021 in and around my patio, as well as the dining room, because I do have some orchids that are in the dining room all year round. I will do a part two on this just for the complex phalaenopsis because it's, I find it super interesting. And I hope that you'll find that interesting too, because once again, I only grow indoors when it gets too cold for most of my collection. During the winter, the rest of the season, everybody is outdoors. So I am extremely dependent on climate, weather conditions, sun and heat. What else has gone on? Well, let me show you 
Here is my Wabash Valley, my Binosa Wabash Valley. Last year, it had bloomed beautifully in July. And this year, I have a sheath, and thankfully there's something in that sheath. But it is now September, and I'm only at this stage. I have another growth over here. It also has a sheath. I can't feel anything in there, but it's possible that that will bloom as well, or we're gonna skip a year. But you see, it is September. I am six weeks behind seeing blooms on my Benosa Wabash Valley. How about Lelia perinii? Oh, way behind. She normally blooms for me end of June, beginning of July. See this growth? This sheath now is already chubby and feels hollow inside like it does when it gets ready to bloom. It has sort of a pea pod kind of a texture and feels like it's full of air. She may bloom, she may not, but it has taken forever for this growth to do something and you can see that it wasn't entirely happy with the conditions while it was growing. I boil that down to the fact that it was far too cool, but because of the day lengths already being up to speed with what they want, it started to grow the growth, but it wasn't the happy, fast growth. Lelia perinii don't do much for most of the year. Suddenly they grow a growth, they bloom, and it's done all within, well, three months. Blooms for 10 days to two weeks, if you're lucky, and then she's done. But because of the mild, mild temperatures, she only got going because the day lengths told her it's time to get moving. But the mild temperatures inhibited the growth plus the blooming. So we'll see if we'll get some blooms out of her this year or not. But she is also way behind. My Dinard Blue Heaven, same thing, has already bloomed in the other years around July. And look at here, we've got a beautiful growth at least there's that. And the sheath in here is absolutely amazing. So we haven't lost that dynamic on this one, but is it gonna bloom? I'm not entirely sure. I know that there's a little bit of a shadow in there. However, is it enough? Or is it just going to abort and go dormant as the temperatures start to drop? I don't think it has enough time to develop that bloom, but we shall see. But you see again, way, way behind. And the same thing goes for my Siamese Gold Kiwi right here. Last year bloomed in June. Granted, she also bloomed for me in winter. But then I'm thinking, well, I've got two bloom cycles within 12 months. But she is only focusing on roots. And I say only in inverted commas. I'm super happy that she is. I still do not see any signs of a new growth. And I used to get summer blooms out of her. So all this time from the last time she's bloomed, she's either rested and all this summer, this entire summer, all she's done is focus on roots. Fair enough, not complaining, just showing you the difference. Let me move her out of the way because I have my two Sunya greens right here. They have never bloomed for me. I've never been successful to get these to bloom. All right, so I've got Sunya Green right here, and this is the mailman, Sunya Green, named cultivar mailman. Granted, last year this piece got a massive chop, and then it was repotted, and the division was sent away. However, there's only a new growth starting now. Now. Nothing all season. My other orchids that had a massive division taken off of them last year, this year, they have produced new growths according to the timing of the year, maybe a little bit slower because of the temperatures, but they've produced new growth. This one, not a light. It's starting now. Here we have the mailman. The past two years, my mailman, I've had bud blast because in my first year with this orchid, I thought, yippee, buds are coming. I moved her from the east shelf to my blooming alley so that as the buds develop and mature, they wouldn't blast if I went to move them so I could enjoy the blooms in my blooming alley. Well, they blasted, so I thought second year, I'm not gonna do that. Last year, same time of year, same season. I got my buds, everything was great. I left her on the east side so that she would bloom out to then move her and enjoy her in my blooming alley they blasted as well. So there's that history, always the right time of year that she's attempting to bloom. And well, the blooms failed for whatever reasons that I haven't figured out. However, this year, look at this growth. It's nowhere near mature. And I'm talking the bud blast would happen in around June or July with this one. Look, I mean, I'm happy it's a fabulous new growth. 
really pleased about that. And I'm actually thinking, well, if you're going to bloom and it will hold on to the blooms and bloom out this year, then at least I know it prefers to bloom in cooler temperatures. Perfect. But isn't it amazing, though, that the growth itself is not even mature? And that is because of my mild temperatures throughout March, April, May. And then the temperatures never really, really got hot for July and August. I know my heat tolerance. I'm someone that loves it super, super hot. And that has not happened this year. I never came to the heat sensor radius where I feel like, yes, this is my time of year. Never really arrived at that point. But in August, there was another phenomenon, which was 70% average humidity. I couldn't believe it. We had maybe temperatures from 28 degrees to 31 degrees around about there. That is mild for August, but I've never had an average of 70% humidity and several days consecutive of 80 to 85% humidity. That was phenomenal. I had so little work to do in August considering what I normally have to do with all my spraying. And I had some root growth that extended beyond what would normally happen. Let me show you. We did a care collab on Brasavola flagellaris, but look, that is August and the extended humidity and my root tips were remaining active. The other years when I wasn't on YouTube, I used to be spraying quite a lot, misting, misting, misting to keep root as active for as long as possible. And it was a massive workload. And that's why I said just now, my August, I didn't have that workload. The humidity was just off the charts for that time of year in this region. Very, very grateful. That is only one example, but it goes to show how much humidity helps and why I miss Kenya so much. But let me show you another example with regards to where an orchid should be based on the time of year and where it's at at this time. So we're looking at Dendrobium of Phylum even though we've got other dendrobium sticking out there, but I'm referring to dendrobium of phylum. In September, I've got some of the canes now starting to go pendant, but in the past years, these canes would have already reached their pendant direction of growth, and you can see how many I have sticking out. Because of the very, very cold January, February, like I said, these outdoor orchids, no problem with the one Celsius drop in temperature, but it affected when the bloom nubbins came out, which were very, very late in comparison to previous years. And on top of that, because of the extended cold temperature, the ambient air was colder than usual. It took two weeks more for those nubbins to develop properly and bloom out fully. The growths themselves, they kick-started when the orchid was just starting to bloom out. But that is also approximately five weeks later than what normally would have happened in past years. So I'm still getting a lot of growth. We may still get a great Indian summer, but I can see from the progress or lack thereof or the stages of growth my orchids are at, my climate changed how my orchids grew. But to finish this off, I'm going to show you two things which are very, very welcome, despite the fact my climate changed. These orchids are off too, but the consequences of all those factors, I'll take them. We are in September and look what's going on. Never in my little orchid growing career here on my patio in southern Spain have I had Vanda Leopard Yon and Neo Rainbow Forest in bloom in September. This is a first. And the fact that the Leopard Yon is blooming again and there's another spike coming out in the back. Like I said, I'm not complaining. I'm pointing these things out. Oh my goodness. And you know what? This milder climate has also helped to keep my blooms lasting much, much longer. They don't look so fried. So the temperatures were perfect. The humidity in August was amazing. The temperatures have now dropped a teeny tiny bit. We've still got beautiful sparkling sunshine. And I'm hoping for a nice warm Indian summer so that I can pick up on the growths that are happening now with the cattleyas I showed you earlier, that they will actually mature. And then we'll wait and see what 2022 brings. But this climate changed my orchids for the season of 2021. There are some very interesting factors, other examples, like the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that uh, I will do a separate little tour on and show you what is different there. 
but I really wanted to bring it to your attention and ask, have you found a similar dynamic in your collection? Now, of course, I'm sorry, but I guess the people that are growing inside in a controlled environment, this question doesn't really apply. Maybe it does. I wouldn't know, but if it does, then let me know in the comments below. Have you found a similar dynamic this year? If you are growing outdoors, did something happen in your growing season that is off the norm from previous growing seasons? I have a plethora of examples. Just wanted to point out the more interesting ones, the more obvious ones, without having to go into long and winded detail as to why I see a difference. But these two candidates, to have them in bloom in September, plus another spike coming, this spectacle is normally a July spectacle. July, beginning of August. My summer basket of goodness is what I call it, and that's why I know it is six weeks behind in doing what it's doing. Van der Leppard Jon never had blooms in September, ever. Never mind a second bike even coming. So yeah, just thought it was interesting as I go through my collection, as I recap 2021, and wondering if you've noticed something fishy going on with your orchids as well during 2021, and you couldn't quite put your finger on it. Let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear how your growing season has gone, and everybody who's now moving into spring because of the hemisphere location, Lucky, lucky you. Keep an eye out on your orchids, keep an eye out on the angle of the sun, and have fun watching them wake up. Thank you so much for your time here watching this video. Really appreciate it, and I really hope everything is going well for you and your orchids. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.